Hello all. Um, today I'm going to try to pick up where we were in the first, first part of this discussion. Um, I'm going to start with the figure we had, which represents a very simple humanoid. Not quite humanoid, but humanoid enough for us to understand that if you spent time working with this figure and made the hands, the head and all the um, textures that go on the body, you might be able to um, create something that looked vaguely humanoid. Now, um, the purpose, though, of this presentation is to discuss how do we rig, and what does rig mean anyway? Uh, well, rig means that you create a skeleton and put it inside this avatar. And then once you have that um, fixed up, so that the, the skeleton moves the pieces of the avatar around, then you can export that to Unity. And when Unity gets it, then it will move around in the scene in Unity. So that's the sort of total picture, but I'll warn you, this goes on for quite a while. And, but you'll see some of this that works, and some of it that's not explained too well in various places. The first thing to know is you can get rigs from uh, Unity, or from Blender rather, and in Blender you can say Add, and Armature, and it will allow you to create a single bone, uh, a meta rig, that is a, a rig of rigs, an animal, say a bird, a cat, a horse, a shark, a wolf, or a basic human rig. I'm going to start with the basic human rig. You can see here it came from selecting armature, basic, and then human. Ah, there it appears. Now, let us um, answer the question which comes up, well, how did you get that? It wasn't in anything when I pressed add. When I pressed add it just had a single bone, that's all. Well it turns out in Blender under File, under User Preferences, you can go to something called Add-ons right there and type Rigify. And Rigify is something that is delivered with Blender but when you first get it, this is unchecked, not knowing if you want it or not. So if you check that and then press um, Save User Settings, you'll have it from now on. So there is the skeleton. We need to line it up with our model. Let's do that. First, let's press the uh, N key and see if we can rotate that skeleton around the z-axis. That's straight up in Blender. So I'll put 90 degrees here and see if it does that. Oh, yes it does. Now if I move this back, oh, right about in there, and right about over here, it looks like it's at about zero, 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 or somewhere close to where we made our model, but it's not quite the right size, is it? Well, you can see it sure isn't, is it? Well, one thing, when you have it all selected like this, you can press S and make it bigger. See the top sticking out of the head? I'll just move it down a little bit, like so. Or maybe I'll just stick it here where the arms can go across, like that. Now, um, whoops, let me click it to make sure it stays right there. Now you're not seeing it too well, are you? If I look at it over on this side, you can see it's basically outside of this figure. So if I put it in, now we'll need to make that skeleton or armature, as it's called, conform to the figure we made. Well, you can't really see it very well, can you? But if you go over 
to uh, what looks like a little man standing there in the icons over in this bright pane, pane you can click X-ray. And this is critical. There, I just pressed X-ray. Now, what I have to do is to move these bones around so they fit the figure. Well, um, you can do that, or I could do that right here, but let me pause uh, and, and move these. You have to click Edit, and then you have to click, say, one of these. You can see there. And I could actually move it up by moving it like this. Ah, it did it. Well, you, you can do this for a while, but let me do it and pause this video for just uh, a moment or two, and I'll be right back after I've moved these bones. Okay, I have to tell you what I did while I was absent here for a few minutes. I um, started moving bones around, and I noticed on the model I had not put in feet, would you believe? So I came down here and extruded this foot out. And of course, since it's mirrored, the other one extruded also, as we saw how to do in our previous video. Now, as it turns out, I was able to move these bones all around by clicking on the points in between in an edit mode, just moving them up and down or back and forth. It worked pretty well. Now, um, it took me about five or ten minutes to get these all into place, and it's not a fun task. You should know that there are other uh, methods in doing this that actually uh, put the armatures inside the figures for you. We'll look at some of those. But look at these bones. They're in there. And look at the side. You can see I lined them up, and you can see what the bones are. Let's do that for just a moment. This bone is what? It says it's the left thigh. This one, it says, is the right thigh. This one is the shin left, and the other one's shin right, and so forth. And here we have a foot one, and a toe one out here at the end. Now, there was a heel one in here, but I took that out because I just thought I'd simplify this for this particular example. Now, notice we have spine going up this way. Yes. And we have spine, and we continue to have spines. We didn't have anything really specified as a head in this, but I can remember that these two are called spine six, is the top one. And I could just, when we make this into a model for Unity, we could just say, that's the head, because I don't have any animations yet for this at all. But you can see how that works uh, pretty clearly. So I'm going to pause this and, um, well, let me first save it. Okay, I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go over to uh, Unity and bring it in. And you'll see what happens there. Okay, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, here we are back again. I pulled up the Unity screen, and I have a <coughs> scene that I'm creating that has um, an avatar in it. And I took my um, Finder window in my Mac and just took the um, export from Blender, which I called Part 2, .fbx. Uh, you have to, while you're in Blender, export it. And then I'm going to, I brought that over into Unity. And there it is, part two. Now a key thing is when you first bring that in, you can see that what it says about it in the um, information window here, 
we have in the inspector the ability to rig it, change its size, put in animation, put in materials, and do all kinds of things. But the first thing is to say, let's create a rig for Unity from this model. Let's make it a humanoid. It could be generic if you want to make an animal or something else. Um, so if I say create from this model, I can say configure. Ah, oh, okay. Let me configure it. And look over here on the right side. It looks like it found all the stuff it needed. If it doesn't, it comes up red in the places it doesn't because I had to um, define parts of my rig by actually um, subdividing the arm and subdividing the leg and subdividing the spine. So I forgot to say that earlier, but that was a key thing too, because one has to have that spine subdivided and you have to make an armature by pressing armature in the um, modeling system where you had that um, add-in, that component, which allowed us to actually subdivide things inside the uh, skin. So that was an important thing which I should have mentioned earlier, but I had to subdivide um, those pieces of the body up so that when I press this button for mapping, the actual um, system here would look for the pieces of the body, the spine, the upper arm, the shoulder, the forehand arm, the hand, the toes, and so forth, and map them into what they can, it can move. So that's what happened there. Now, it turns out that after you do that, when you press Done, you can take that... Um, and move it into the scene just by dragging it on in. Oh, there it is. Look at that. It looks pretty lousy, doesn't it? But it is a model that we created. And if I, I played um, this, I would probably find that I had, since I had... Um, Ethan in there before, that I might be able to control that. Well, it doesn't much look like I could, but in any event, um, Ethan is over there, and you could walk up to this model and look at it, or move it around, or make it the model. So that's basically the overview with the main features, some of which I left out later on, so you might have to listen to this twice to really get it and make some notes. I also have included on the wiki some other um, pretty good videos from other people that show how to do this kind of thing. Not easy. Uh, not straightforward. It takes a long time, but if you want to make your own models and animate them, then you can. And that's one of the reasons you can find a lot of these for sale on uh, the asset stores, because people have spent a lot of time making them. I'm going to, in another video, go over what's been done with some that are already made that you can actually get and use. Uh, and rather than making something yourself, you can uh, use other stuff that other people have already done. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.